So to the women's doubles final, and as you can see, it's an all Chinese affair. This will be the eighth consecutive time that China will take the women's doubles title here at the Hong Kong Open. On to court first, the defending champions, the current world champions, Wang Xiaoli and Yu Young. This a repeat of the world championship final from Wembley Arena earlier this year because their opponents, Tian Qing and Zhao Yunlei. Zhao Yunlei, of course, has already won a title here this year. Our first final of the day playing with Chang Nan, won the mixed doubles. They are the Asian Games gold medalists. Beat their opponents of today in the final of those Asian Games in Guangzhou. And in fact, Tian Qing and Zhao Yunlei won the first two encounters against their opponents of today. But the Asian Games don't count towards world rankings and therefore the head-to-head -head statistics only take into account the ranking tournaments. So Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang won the title last year, unseeded, beat the then world number ones in the final, Chen Wen-sing and Qian Yu Chin of Taipei. Wang Xiaoli actually going for her third consecutive women's doubles title here. Because Wang Xiaoli won the title here in 2009, playing with Ma Jin. Well, that's pretty impressive, isn't it? There's Wang Xiaoli, 23 years of age, her partner, 25. All four matches in two straight games. The longest being the semi-final yesterday against the number four seeds, Ha Jong-un and Kim Ming-jung, which lasted a staggering 33 minutes. Talk about double quick time. Well, if you think that's impressive for Tian Qing and Zhao Yunlei, not quite as impressive because their semi-final against Christina Peterson and Camilla Oruta Yul of Denmark took 34 minutes. But they too, quite outstanding. Second round encounter against Cheng Shu and Pan Pan. And of course, Cheng Shu was Zhao Yunlei's former partner and Pan Pan was Tian Qing's former partner. So, as we look at our court officials for this women's doubles final, for Zhao Yunlei, this her fourth Hong Kong Open final, and we played one already today, it was a beaten finalist back in 2008 with Cheng Shu, and of course it was runner-up in the mixed doubles last year. Well, for Yu Yang, she won the title in 2007 with Du Jing, and Wang Xiaoli, as I say, won the title in 2009 with Ma Jin. So the reigning world champions, the defenders of the Hong Kong Open title. Far side of the court, there they are. The world Championship silver medalists. Tian Qing and Zhao Yunlei. Well, on the head-to-heads, this is the ninth meeting between the two of them. And as I say, Tian Qing and Zhao Yunlei won the first two occasions. Last time they met was in the final of the French Open. 26-24, 21-15, the world champions won on that occasion.
I have to say, the world champions have started exceptionally well here. champion won that title in Beijing playing with Du Jing Du Jing incidentally over the last week or so has just announced her retirement she's had a persistent knee injury which is one of the reasons why one Xiao Li was paired with Yu Yang because there was concern about Du Jing's long-term ability to cope with the injury Good return of serve. Open. Ian Wright and I were discussing at length about these two women's doubles pairs and especially Yu Yang and Wang Xiao Li and about what an aggressive attacking pair they are taking the women's doubles we feel probably to a new level certainly the way they've started this final controlled aggression very impressive indeed For the world champions, Wang Xiao Li and Yu Yang, the only players in the world who have a possibility next week of winning the Grand Slam, as it were, of Premier Super Series events, because the first time ever this year there's been five Premier events and they've won the previous four, and the fifth and final Premier Super Series event is next week. No other players in any other discipline have won the previous four, so it's only Wang Xiao Li and Yu Yang who could possibly achieve that. And quite frankly, the way they've started this final, I wouldn't bet against it. They look very sharp indeed. Good serves, hunt the third shot. Oh dear, that's the problem, isn't it? Trying to put in such a tight low serve makes the error. I know that anything that's a little loose will be pounced on.
Oh, desperately short rallies. Initial stages of this final. It was because of the good play of the world champions. Yeah, see, serve, return, so much pressure, forced into error. A bit like men's doubles now. Very short rallies indeed. Too cute. Oh! And then sheer power from Yu Young. Not only won the gold medal in Beijing in the women's doubles, took a bronze medal in the mixed doubles, playing with her hand bent, but now choosing to concentrate 100% on her women's doubles. Yeah, that's perfect defense. Must have been desperately close. Yeah, once again, as with the men's singles, the atmosphere here a little flat at the moment. Not only do the crowd not know which pair to support, but it's not the most inspiring badminton at the moment. On to that one, see how Lee. Well, seeing these rallies, it's quite easy to understand why. Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang. The longest match so far has only been 33 minutes. Because here we are after nine minutes of play. And they have nine game points. Best rally of the match so far. And it concludes the opening game, 21-12, in favour of the defending champions. Just 10 minutes for that opening game. Well, quite clearly, the best rally of the opening game to finish it off.
No coaching staff involved. Players left to their own devices. Olympic champion Yu Yang, very much the commander of the partnership. And yet I feel her partner, Wang Xiao Li, I think she's the playmaker. I think she's the one who creates the opportunities. Force is the error. Great tactician. Clever placement of the smash. Great awareness from Wang Xiaoli. Got a pretty powerful smash as well. And that as a combination is pretty le lethal. One much flatter from Wang Xiaoli, always mixing up the angles, mixing up the pace. Uh, I do like the way that Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang always look to try and move forward in court, always look to try and attack. It was a stage a few years ago when women's doubles became a very defensive discipline, all about the defensive play. And this is why I strongly believe that these two pairs, and especially Yu Yang and Wang Xiaoli, are going to take women's doubles to a whole new level. Whilst they've got very good defences, it's all about getting on the attack, looking to get the net player involved. Oh, seven, love. There's a little hand signal. Just telling her partner where she's going to serve to. Oh, that was going out the back too. Well, of all their previous encounters, I don't think there's one that's been quite as one-sided as this. Extraordinary. Nine love. Let's not forget that Tian Qing and Zhao Yunlei are the world number two ranked pair. They are the Asian Games gold medalists. believe this. Ten love. The crowd can hardly believe it either. Yeah, well the crowd trying to encourage Tian Jing and Zhao Yun Lei. And they get a point on the board in this second game. But we go to the mid-game interval. Ten point advantage. 
11-1 the scoreline. Well, it's just all one-way traffic at the moment. Asian Games gold medalists just haven't got themselves into the match. Well, well long of the back line, taken by the drift. Well, I have to say this pair, the world champions, since forming their partnership, have been virtually unstoppable. China Open last year, they had to withdraw partway through their first round match and because of an injury to Wang Xiao Li. And apart from that, this is their 16th individual tournament and their 15th final. So apart from that injury problem, they've reached the final of every ah! other tournament. And certainly you look at this year, this is their 11th consecutive final. Oh dear. Well. Tournament doctor is being called for. We we'll see how Lee and you, Young, already eight titles this year. And I think Zhao Yun Lei, well, oh, she's holding that left knee. Well, I didn't see any problem in specifically in that rally. Oh, she has had a very tough mixed doubles final. Lasted an hour and four minutes. And I suspect they're so far adrift. 2.14 down, having lost the opening game. I suspect she's probably had enough. She's shaking her head as if to say, no, don't want to continue on. Well, medical staff there. They can only assess the situation. They're looking towards the Chinese team doctor is on the side of the courts. He, of course, is not allowed on. Uh, deputy referee saying no, mustn't come on yet. Uh, he's raising his hand to say, no, you've got to be assessed by the tournament medical staff. Yeah, and as I suspected, She's had enough. So the title is retained by Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang. For the world champions, number one in the world, ninth title of the year. And for Wang Xiaoli, her third consecutive Hong Kong Open title, having won in 2009 with Ma Jin. Last year, of course, won with Yu Young. So they are champions once more. Well, it'll be interesting to see whether she plays next week in the Premier Super Series event in Shanghai. Yeah. 
You know, she had a problem. She always wears strapping on both her knees. You know how she feels. We'll have a word with our champions in just a moment. Uh,非常开心,因为每次到香港这里比赛都会有很好的成绩,所以,呃,每次拿到冠军以后都非常开心,也觉得这里就是我们的,呃,比较福地吧,应该是,对,也很开心有这么多球迷给我们,呃,一
Well, she stood on top of the podium after the mixed doubles final to Zhao Yunlei, but here with Tian Ching in the women's doubles have to settle for second best. Because once again, Wang Xiaoli and Yu Yang are champions here in Hong Kong, retaining the title that they won last year and for Wang Xiaoli, her third consecutive title in Hong Kong. Yang Ching and Xiao Yunlei playing the Hong Kong Open for the first time as a pair. Third title for Yu Yang, having won in 2007 with Du Jing, and a third consecutive title for Wang Xiao Li. Let's have Mr. Lampkin to present the trophy. Their ninth title of the year. The sixth Super Series title of the year. Plus, of course, the Super Series finals from last year, which was played in January this year. presentation made in virtual silence here. I suspect the crowd are very disappointed that, that match wasn't completed. So the presentation is complete. And finally, the crowd show their appreciation. So with the women's doubles proceedings now complete, means that we have just one more final to come. It's the men's doubles. It is the world number one and two ranked pairs. World champions Kai Yun and Fu Haifeng will be up against the world number twos, Jung Jason and Lee Yong Day. Men's doubles coming up in just a moment.
Now I have a pleasure to call upon Mrs. Paul Bala, NH Chairman of the Hong Kong Bankers Association, to present this overview. First of all, I would like to call upon the referee, Mr. Giuliano Suhantinata of the Indonesia. So to our fifth and final, final of the day. And it's men's doubles. It's the number one and two ranked pairs in the world. The world champions, Kai Yun and Fu Haifang, up against the Koreans, Jung Jae Sung and Lee Yong Day. The court officials get announced onto court. I can tell you that these two men's doubles pairs appearing in the final have really dominated men's doubles this year. Kai Yun and Fu Haifang of China. Winners of the Hong Kong Open back in 2005. 
They are the reigning world champions. They're four times world champions, Olympic silver medalists, and now here in Hong Kong, appearing in their ninth final of the year. In the previous eight finals they've been in, they've won five of them. But their opponents, the number two pair in the world, have been in great form of late. Led out by Lee Yong Day and his partner Jung Jae Sung. Jung Jae Sung, the shorter of the two men. Well, they've won this Hong Kong Open twice previously, 2008 and 2009. They're appearing in their 10th final of the year. They've won six titles, so when I say that these two pairs have dominated men's doubles throughout 2011, I think that emphasizes the point. Well, this is the 19th meeting between these two pairs. But I think perhaps most significant is the fact that the Koreans have won the last three encounters. But Kai Yun and Fu Haifeng didn't have to play their semi final yesterday, given a walkover by Tao Xiaoming and Jiang Ning, Jiang Nan. but look pretty impressive in their earlier matches. Their first three matches, won in two straight games, including a quarter-final victory over the American veterans of Howard Bark and Tony Gunwin, the 2005 world champions. Well, there is Lee Yong Day, very, very famous man, not only in Korea, but also throughout the whole of Asia. And they had a tough first round encounter, went the full distance against Hong Wei and Shen Ye. And then, yesterday in their semi-final against the world championship silver medalists and the defending champions here in Hong Kong Go Sung Hyung and Yu Young Sung very very comfortable victory indeed 21-10 21-9 in 23 minutes but then Horenbeck of Belgium is our umpire service judge from Malaysia So the last three meetings were all in finals. Final of the China Masters, final of the Danish Open, final of the French Open. And it was the Korean pairing who's won the last three Super Series events. And that's not strictly true, is it? Getting my facts wrong. Of course, after the China Masters was the Japan Open. No. Won three of the last four Super Series events. The Koreans this their tenth final this year and 14 tournaments played. Twenty-three year old Lee Yong Day, the Olympic mixed doubles champion, won the title with Lee Ho Jung, who's just got married to a former basketball player, Suk Seong Ho, married on the 29th of October. Players ready to play. Lee Yong Day couldn't attend the wedding because of course he was busy playing in France. Well, incredibly, this is the seventh meeting between this pair this year. And as far as 2011 is concerned, of the previous six, it's the Koreans who have won four of them.
strong possibility. I think that three of the four players on court could retire after the Olympic Games in London next year. Kai Yun is already 31 years of age. Fu Haifeng, 27. Jung Jae Sung, 29. And it's Lee Yong Day. There's been a lot of speculation about who he'll play with when Jung Jae Sung does retire. The favourite, of course, is Go Sung Hyung. On my right. So the world champions get this men's doubles final underway. Big hitting already. Powerful smashes. Of course, Fu Haifang holds the record as the fastest smash in competition play. 332 kilometers an hour, that was. Oh, uh, touched it, Fu Haifang. Brilliant. Phenomenal smash from Jung Jae Sun. What a great start by the Koreans. Five love. China don't actually have a very good record here at the Hong Kong Open as far as the men's doubles title is concerned. They've only won the men's doubles twice in 23 Hong Kong Opens. Of course, this Hong Kong Open first took place in 1982. And of course, you think that I've gone completely mad and we should be having the 30th Hong Kong Open. Some years the event didn't take place. There's only been 23 prior to this year. away the Chinese player's best formation which is an attacking formation and Fu Haifeng using his power from the back of the court and Kai Yun's so fast at the front and when they're forced to defend they can't go into their favourite formation
Total confusion. Oh, it's a clever defensive shot. Put no pace on the shuttle at all. Just a nice little block into the midcourt area. Both the Chinese players stood and looked at each other. wide my goodness mate four minutes and we're already at the mid-game interval eight point advantage to Jung Jae Sung and Lee Yong Day what a phenomenal start by the Koreans the world champions trying to make it a clean sweep of titles for China. China won the previous four finals. Unless they can turn this around at the moment, they're being outclassed by the Koreans. Great serve. Yeah. Defensively, sometimes Fu Haifan can look very awkward indeed. Seems to have a stiff arm in defensive play rather than relaxed, easy hitting style. Unbelievable. Oh. Well, a great rally. And quite clearly the longest rally of the match so far. Oh, the Koreans had to defend for so long in the early stages of that rally and then what appeared to be a simple opportunity for John Jae Sung put into the net. Service fault call struck above the waist. Says our service judge. Placement too. Of course, the Koreans hitting with the drift. Therefore, the shuttles will go down even faster. It's gone all right. Yeah, really pressurizing Phil Haifung's defense.
Oh, this gun's gone in the racket. Yeah, you could hear that immediately. towards his partner as if to say is that going short yeah, that's the problem with lifting from that far side of the court strong possibility that the lift will go long with the back line because they're playing themselves back into this opening game. Straight points now. To call you and through high phone. Half the deficit. Oh, clever. Lovely, lovely disguise from Kai Yun. Wasn't even close. to their aggressive attacking play that they used so well at the start of this opening game. And they'll change of pace, a lot of all hard hitting, really working and placing the shuttle so well to get the net player involved. finished off from the front of the court by the net player. Very deep in their defensive stance. Indecision. Going wide, yeah, second indecision from Fu Hai Fung.
it's called good. Lee Young Day is not convinced by it. of points normally when these two pairs play against each other it's very close all the way through the game oh, it's delightful good use of the mid-court area and six game points now to Jung and Lee Oh, my goodness. I think the strings have gone in Fu Haifeng's racket. Yeah, off he goes. Changed his racket. And then his partner, who had done admirably to keep in the rally, made a hash of is attempted interception, but it means that Jung Jae Sung and Lee Yong Day take the opening game 21 14. There's the return of serve, absolutely extraordinary. They knew that the strings had gone, hence the big lift. The block tries to get himself forward to the net. Off he goes. Well, the crowd just been showing this replay on the giant screen here at the Coliseum. Having a little chuckle at him. The two time former champions, Jung Jae Sung and Lee Yong Day, and taking that opening game 21 14. And as far as the world champions are concerned, they've got to get a better start to the second game than they did the first. Yeah. Certainly from that far side of the court in doubles, we're attacking play. It's the usual tactic. It's a definite advantage. Kai-Yung was right to try and intercept, go forward. That's really what they've got to try and do because that's their favoured formation, him intercepting at the net.
return of serve. surprised that Leon Doe just appeared content to defend in that rally in the opening game he weren't defending at all the shuttle did come down at the Koreans they were blocking it or driving it turning their defensive play back into attack Great flip serve. Mm. Five, appear to me as if it's through her front it's still struggling a little bit to find his best form <laughs> superb yeah that's what they're famous for the power play from the back of the court from the tall left hand up Here's the power shots. Now in the centre of the court, the channel attack narrows the angle of reply and therefore Kai Yun able to intercept. He's so fast at reading the game. Time the smash, not steep enough. And long of the back line. Entirely comfortable. Very characteristic error from Kyle Yun. Well, no 
have been a miss hit. Had the desired effect. Centre clash of rackets between the two Chinese players. Is Kai underwent heart surgery back in 2001. Since then, has won four world titles, Olympic silver. So a three-point advantage to the world champions mid-game interval. And the Koreans have taken the first. So there's just three points in it. The gap can easily be closed. reaction at the end of that rally told a lot yeah pumped up now seems slightly sluggish at the start of the match but my goodness firing on all, all cylinders now Fast and furious.
is the sort of defensive play that we saw in the opening game from Lee Yong Day. The block defense immediately moved forward and that turned the momentum of the rally. going to leave it suddenly realized about the drift in the arena and that the drift would bring it back in that far side of the court so now there's just one point in it oh yeah it's gonna land a mile in uh, make some ends immediately Me, this is good badminton now. Yeah, played it on to the left hander's forehand side and played his partner into the trouble. Well, the court has been mopped of the perspiration. Has taken the opportunity to tail down. Rocket. to just one point. Call cool from Zhang Jae Sung to his partner to leave it. And it was the right instruction. Well, having been four points adrift at 9.13, now back to level 15 all. Another one goes long, and in fact, the Koreans into the lead. First time in this second game that they've actually had their noses in front. A 
I don't believe this. Oh, my goodness! Sensational rally! Well, both the Korean players at one stage in that rally were down on the floor, diving in an effort to get the shuttle back. Absolutely brilliant. Up he gets. Then it was the turn of his partner. Still, they played on. And down he goes again. Well, incredible. Incredible badminton. 17-15. Four straight points. that they love. serve he's already served one ace with a flick he's been called a fault in the opening game for his serve will he stick with a low serve yeah indeed oh, that's brilliant. back level once more He held his nerve. So now four straight points for the Chinese combination. 19, and two points away from the second game. Oh my goodness me, this is a big point. almost going to slide underneath the net partner covering so well and Kai absolutely livid with himself for missing that one at the net it's 19 all Koreans and they're on the verge of victory they've earned themselves a match point 
Yeah, it's the defence of Fu Haifang that's a little bit vulnerable. Match point. his power smash to such great effect match point saved 20 all and we will require extra points until there's a clear two point winning margin From Lee on day took it early in the midcourt area, followed forward to the net. So now a second match point opportunity for the world number twos. And a second time, it's saved. Kai, you're an absolutely pouncing on that low serve. It's a brilliant serve. So now, having saved two match points now Kai Yun and Fu Haifang have a game point to send this to a third and deciding game that's wrong to the forehand side once again of Fu Haifang. A dangerous tactic. Here it comes. Left his partner exposed to the straight smash. So now, second game point opportunity for the Chinese pair. here at the Hong Kong Coliseum. It is one game all in the men's doubles final. Saved two match points. They've come back from the brink. And we will be treated to a third and deciding game. Three minutes of pulsating badminton.
Well, the fans here at the Coliseum. Oh, the buzz of anticipation, my goodness me. I need to catch my breath again after the excitement of that second game. Two match points Final game. for the number two Double. seeds, Jung Jae Sung and Lee Yong Day. Play. Couldn't convert. And on their second game point opportunities, Chinese combination leveled it at one game all. See that too often. Very high foul. Intercepting at the net. Nicely done too. his body to be able to play that Service look at that it's extraordinary oh. yeah suddenly Fu Hai Fung has come alive and he's really making a difference at the front of the court Incredible badminton. Four, two. We had a couple of finals this afternoon that were a little bit flat, but my goodness me, this is more than making up for it. what they were doing so well in the opening game, getting the net player involved, the Koreans. Time the shot there. Perhaps a little bit of fatigue, that'd be understandable.
pushed it wide. Big swing of the racket. Quite often happens when you're at the net. It was big swing of the racket. You missed time the shot. Short, sharp movement of the racket head will suffice. Far exchange. Pure frustration, too obvious from Fu Hai Fang. Yeah, it was indeed long of that back line. That's a great call by the line judge. Sun is absolutely total. The dive out wide to his forehand side. There it was. Gets back up. Plays the winning shot and the Koreans a back level one game all nine all in the decider
super drop shot. The disguise from Kai Yun. Leapt in the air, opened his shoulders and then checked the shot at the last moment. Great racket head control. Well, he missed that. He wasn't meaning to leave it, but it landed out. I really thought that he may have touched the shuttle. I wouldn't mind seeing that again. Yeah, I think this is the wrong angle. Well, it's all happening here. Advantage with the world champions going on and feel high fault. Just two points in it here in this deciding game. It's gone long. is just getting better and better. Have okay, a change of pace from the long day. players spreading their arms out wide to indicate that the shuttle was indeed long but I'm surprised that the umpires not had a word with them to ask them not to try to influence the line judges Definitely long, wide as well. Koreans 
managing to work through Hai Fung at the back of the court, not really giving him time. There, you see, it was off balance. Thirteen all. Good return. What a time to produce a cross court net shot like that. Perfection. Williams into the lead. And now an error from Fu Hai Fung. Well, there were two points adrift at the mid-game interval. Now two points to the good. Two-point cushion. It's a great rally. And Jung Jae Sung did remarkably well. Had to turn from his backhand defence to defend forehand. 16, Here's the backhand, then plays the forehand. And did very well indeed. Three point cushion now. Five straight points. Really put a different complexion on the mindset of the Koreans. to be a little too clever, did Lee Yong Day. And Kai Yun is far too quick and far too astute to be fooled by that. 15, 16. <laughs> oh, so this fault called. Struck above the waist, says the service judge. Service over, 17, 15. Mm, I think the service judge was right too. away from the third Hong Kong Open title. That's gone long. Error on the smash from Fu Haifeng. Never came over the shuttle. 
Everton flat that went wrong at the back line. So now the Koreans two points away from regaining the title. Oh dear. The nerves getting to leave in one day. Serve. Ah, the perfect drop shot hits the top of the net and trickles over. Oh, nearly got it back. Crikey. points the deficit. It's another brilliant serve. Yeah. Waiting. Well, we've had an hour and eight minutes of pulsating badminton, and these two pairs are all level. Having saved two match points in the second game, they've earned themselves a match point here in the decider. in a thrilling, thrilling final. The best two pairs in the world in men's doubles. They've dominated the men's doubles scene this year, have these two pairs. And they've produced a final today to remember. Those match points saved in the second game. Their confirmation of the way they came back, 14-21, 24-22, 21-19 in the decider in an hour and 10 minutes. This was the way it all finished.
they came back from the brink of defeat. They stood on the edge of the precipice, looked over and decided that actually they wanted more. And oh my goodness, how well they came back. Well, they're down the court side now.给我们带来一场非常非常精彩的比赛那么在零五年你们在香港拿过冠军奖杯对颁奖台你们是久违了对这个所有的观众的面孔还是很熟悉的因为零五年我们这里拿冠军的时候也是在座的各位帮我们加
Well, that's even more impressive than that, the Chinese pair since the All England Championships. Have reached nine finals from nine tournaments played. These guys are really, really incredible. Mr. Alex Lee of Bank of China, Hong Kong, will now present the trophy. So, the sixth title of the year, their fourth Super Series title of the year. the bouquet of flowers are presented. Finals day here at the Yonix Sunrise Hong Kong Open. Well, we started with a three-game final, and we've ended with a three-game final. spectacular to watch the two best pairs in the world in men's doubles in action and they produced an absolute classic match today here in Hong Kong so the presentation is complete and once again I can just recap on what's happened today five finals Five titles to China. We started with the mixed doubles and the world champions, Zhang Nan and Zhao Yunlei, reversing the result of the final last year when they were beaten by the Danes, Jorkum Fisher Nielsen and Christina Peterson. This year, they came out on top. Then Lin Dan overcoming Chen Jin. In a men's singles final, only lasting 31 minutes. Women's singles was only 30 minutes, with Wang Sin keeping a 100% record against the European champion, Tina Baum. And then women's doubles, well, it all really fizzled out after Wang Xiao Li and Yu Young had taken the opening game and were 14 2 up against the Asian Games gold medalists, their teammates, Tian Ching and Zhao Yunlei. And as we've just seen, a thrilling men's doubles. Kaiyun and Fu Haifeng, the world champions, back from the brink of defeat, had to save two match points in the second game before they took it 24-22. And of course, the decider came back from 15-19 adrift, six straight points to close it out, 21-19. Well, it's been a remarkable day of badminton, a thrilling match to finish it all off. And of course, the Super Series Tour moves on next week to the China Open, the fifth premier Super Series event of the year and the last, the 12th Super Series event of 2011 before the Super Series finals, of course. There's confirmation of all the finals here this afternoon. As I say, we started with a thriller, we ended with a thriller. But five titles going China's way. So with home advantage next week. China looking very strong indeed, as they always are in badminton. That concludes the Hong Kong Open for 2011. But as I say, we all move on to China next week very much. Hope you'll be able to join us for that in the meantime, from all of us here in Hong Kong, especially from me, Jill Clark. Hope to see you soon. Bye for now.